RJ3, the new John Elway. <laughs> Madness. Oh, what can Viagra do for me? Yeah, what can it do? Oh, sh shit. Uh, guys, holidays are over. Let's roll. Alright guys and welcome to this very special and extended version of our weekly recap after the vacation is over. Here we go. In part 1 of our special weekly recap we'll talk about the games. Clark by Golden Tricycle, Tennis in the Face by Tantons, Swen by Eric Skoklund, Gentleman by Lucky Frame, The Chicken Bandit by Chalk Arm Brothers, Zombie Driver HD by Exo Studios and Munchface by Wicked Loot. Let's go! The last few weeks produced some extremely excellent games and have actually shown a lot of promise for the future of the UEA. That includes one of our current favorite games, Clark. Clark is the name of a cute little repair robot who woke up from stasis to find his ship being completely out of order. Robots running around without guidance and some have turned completely mad, while others have started dancing to music or drinking diesel. Now, Clark needs to find out how to stop this madness and uncover the truth of what happened. You are his instrument to do so and you need to guide the small repair unit through hazardous hallways. You need to evade deadly lasers and evil robots and also you need to help nuclear missiles find peace of mind. Clark is a definite must play for everyone because it's one of those games you immediately fall in love with. The artwork is fantastic, sounds and music are very atmospheric and the story is unique and funny. In the end, Clark is the rightful game highlight of this episode. Next in line is the surprisingly funny game called Tennis in the Face. Who would have thought that such a simple game could capture my attention? If you have played Stupid Zombies, then you'll know what to do in Tennis in the Face. Basically you have to shoot evil clowns or policemen and others with a tennis ball because you really hate them. Why? Because they are addicted to an energy drink by the name of Exploit Z of course. A drink that has destroyed your career as professional tennis player. In order to end this insanity of energy drink addicts, you have to shoot your way through the levels. The premise of this game sounded really boring to be honest, since I wasn't a big fan of stupid zombies. After playing tennis in the face though, I've actually become a big fan of this game. On the one hand, it is more challenging than stupid zombies and on the other hand, this game actually has a funny story and hilarious general setting. The levels are sometimes extremely challenging but you still have a great time shooting clowns in the head with your tennis balls. In a nutshell, tennis in your face is so much better than stupid zombies and a fun casual game for in between or maybe an entire evening. Warning: If you are close to a child or you are easily offended by profane language, you might want to skip this part. If you are cool like me, then keep on watching. Unlike Tennis in the Face, Sven is nothing for the faint hearted. So Sven, you little piece of shit, I fucking hate you. But then again, you are one fantastic rage game. Seriously, if you like a challenge and you don't quit after the first obstacle, Sven will beat the living shit out of you. The concept of this game is that simple. Collect all the items in a level in record time. But this is actually where the tough get going. Record time. In order to progress to world 2 out of 3, you have to beat every level in world 1 in record time. That is easier said than done. I can't remember the day when a game could challenge me like that. Oh, and before you ask, nope, I still haven't mastered that last level of world 1. 
because I suck. The best part about this game is that Sven is completely free. I wonder why, because this game would definitely deserve a buck or two from me. In any case, Sven is that little sleeper game that you have been craving for. Gentleman, on the other hand, is not a sleeper game anymore and has received a lot of praise already. Rightfully so. Gentleman is the number one of the games that really excel on the Ouya. Family friendly couch gaming with a lot of depth. Gentleman has actually been compared to Tower 4 quite often and it is definitely in the same league. I'm not sure whether Gentleman can reach the following of Tower 4, but it does have potential. Just as in Tower 4 you can play with up to 4 players, all trying to kill each other. At your disposal you have wonderful weapons such as knives and homing pigeon bombs to get the better of your opponents. Gentleman also comes with a twist. You can basically switch gravity back and forth in the game, giving the entire movement pattern a whole new dimension. Like I said, I think the Ouya is the perfect home for Gentleman. I can't even begin to understand how anyone could play Gentleman with two players on the iPad. So next time you're having an Ouya party you should give Gentleman a try. It will definitely not be a disappointment and well worth your time. Oh, before I forget, at 4.99 Gentleman beats Tower Falls price tag by a mile. Chicken Bandit is a prime example of a simple and fun single player game that doesn't have to rely on breathtaking graphics to make playing it worth your time. In this game you are a bandit riding on a large chicken while robbing trains. Sounds just like my regular Tuesday evening activity. Pretty normal, right? But behold, that is not the only humorous element in Chicken Bandit. Every little paw oozes with creativity and fun. While that doesn't mean that Chicken Bandit will be a new top seller on the Ouya, it does mean that you can have a wonderful time with this hilarious game and it offers a great alternative to more serious games. Speaking of serious games, here comes Zombie Driver HD. This game shows potential but totally screws up with poor coding and resource management. In Zombie Driver you are trapped in a zombie infested city and to get out of there you have to finish quests. You start with a taxi without any weapons and step by step progress to get a better car and weapons. At least in theory. The reality is that after a few minutes Zombie Driver starts to lag really bad and the more zombies are in your area the worse it gets. It gets so bad that when you're in the middle of the first zombie rush, you have lags of sometimes more than a second, accompanied by a terrible sound because the sounds also lag. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard. That is too bad because Zombie Driver HD shows a lot of potential and I'm actually a big fan of zombie games. Zombie Driver even partly reminded me of the good old Carmageddon or the first two parts of GTA. It has snarky dialogues and all that stuff that in general make a great game. Maybe you want to try it out for yourself and maybe your game doesn't lag. Personally, I've deinstalled Zombie Driver immediately after that first try. Maybe I'll give this one another go after some time and updates have passed. The end of the first part of our recap is dedicated to a niche game that some of you might find interesting. While Munchface is sort of a clone of our beloved old school Pac-Man, it actually is fun to play. It's as simple as Pac-Man and at the same time very hard to put away. At first I was disgusted by the seemingly one to one copy, but then my mind went back to a time when games were much simpler. No sophisticated physics or graphics, just good old fun. So I kept playing Munchface for some time and thoroughly enjoyed it. Honestly, if the creators had spent just a little bit more time updating the graphics and not make it look like a blatant copy, Munchface would have so much more potential to be a big hit on the Ouya. In any case, you should download Munchface and have some retro feeling for yourself. So that is also the end of the first part of our special weekly recap. See you in part 2.